God will test you to know where you put your trust and confidence. He wants to know where truly your trust is in. Preparing for marriage and what have you is not always the easiest thing to do. There is always a period of test that both of you will encounter before you get married. Different signs will tell you that you are passing through a period of test before you get married. We all know that patience is a key value. You need patience in your day-to-day -day life and even in marriage, you'll need a lot of that. And so, one way to know you are passing through a period of test is that your patience will be tried. And what do I mean by that? It means that God will bring out different scenarios to test your patience. It may look like your day-to-day -day life, but you will notice that you tend to get angry more quickly and more easily. It may even be something small, but during that period, you must learn to be careful not to fail the test of patience. The truth is, it is not easy to be patient with someone that is not you. Sometimes, waiting on the Lord requires a lot of patience and it is not always easy. Some people give up while waiting on God because they are not patient. So one sign to know that you are both passing through a test is the patience test. How good are you in waiting for something? Can you wait long for something? And can you be patient? God will bring you scenarios that will test your patience and how well you can handle emergency and unexpected situations. Will you be angry when things don't go your way? Or do you see the hood in every sit and you appreciate God for it? Another sign that you both are passing through a test is that you will notice that different temptations will come your way that will make you feel like you are not making the right choice. That will in turn make you start seeing things that you are not supposed to see. But don't be distracted by that and stay focused on what you want. You will notice that temptation and trials will increase which will even make you wonder if you made the right decision at all. You will be tested and you will be tried. Don't think because you are a Christian or a believer, you will surely be tried. He will try to test you to see whether you are ready or not. But all you need to do is to be ready and trust that all he does is for good. The Bible says all things work together for good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. The Bible says trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Rather in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Another sign you may encounter is that of your integrity. Every child of God has a lever of integrity that is expected from him or her. If you are a child of God, the Lord will test your integrity. Are you an honest and just person or do you just bear the name Christian? You may likely encounter the test of your trust in God. One major way to know if God is testing you is when he tests your trust. Just like Job in the Bible, God gave him up to the devil for a while to be tested, to know if truly he trusts in God or not. Job lost everything he holds dear to him. He asked God questions, but he never shifted his eyes from God. This is the kind of place God wants us to reach, so that even when we are tested, we will know that it is a test and nothing more. It is not because God does not love us or something. It is even because he loves us that he puts us to the test, and I pray that you will recognize that whenever you are in that position. Another sign that you are passing through the test with God before marriage is that he will test your love for each other. First of all, what are the characteristics of love? Let us look from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 13. If I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not to love, that reasoning intentional, spiritual devotion such as is inspired by God's love for and in us, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries, and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not to love God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned, or so that I may glorify, but have not to love God's love in me, I gain nothing. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, 
does not display itself hoidily. It is not conceited, arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its rights or its way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away, it will lose its value and be superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect, and our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void, and superseded. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, and reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and have put them aside. For now, we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality as in a riddle or enigma. But then, when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face. Now I know in part, imperfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I have been, fully known and understood by God. And so faith, hope, love to abide, faith conviction and belief respecting man's relation to God and divine things, hope, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, but the greatest of these, is love. This and more are the characteristics of love, and so God will test how committed and how much so you say you love each other. The truth is that opportunity will surface that will want to make you look or act selfish, but resist that temptation and stand strong. God is faithful, and He is faithful to keep His word and His promise, but He wants to make sure that we can keep our side of the bargain. He wants to know whether you can be faithful to His child, or rather, the person you will end up getting married to. Because no matter how you choose to see it, he wants you both to have the best life together, so he will have to thoroughly pit you to test. Another you must learn to keep in mind is that even though God will out you to test, he is a good shepherd. The Bible told us in Psalms chapter 23 verses 1 to 6 says that the Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh tender green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with Him, not for my earning, but for His namesakes. Yes, though I walk through the deep soundless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my bringing cup runs over. Surely, or only goodness, mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and through the length of my days the house of the Lord and His presence shall be my dwelling place.